Welcome folks. Uh, what I have for you today is uh, how to check out uh, distributor caps and rotors which uh, spin around inside underneath here where you can't see it until uh, further in the video when I flip the, this over and I have another one uh, to show you as well to show you the uh, the electrical arc erosion that goes on inside one uh, once you have it off and turn it upside down that is. Um, so what I'm going to start with today is to show you a few basic things. Um, what you have here is a it's off a Chrysler product. It's um it's off a V8 engine, small block. And uh, for starters, what I'll do is I'll show you um, some basic differences of different distributor caps and how they are um, incorporated into the, each um, system, depending on the manufacturer and the engine and whatnot. Two basic differences of these caps here. With the spark plug leads that go in here, as well as the coil lead that goes into the center portion of most distributor caps that are made, um, you'll find that uh, these ones actually have a recess in here, and the contact is down inside there. So the spark plug has to have a, an extension on it where the metal clip contacts down inside that. So there's one variation of a typical spark plug lead and a coil lead for this type of cap. And a lot of the other ones, and if you get into... Um, I won't go into too much detail, the different caps, but there are different ones depending on where you are in the world. Uh, this one has got, as you can see, they have uh, terminals that uh, stick up, meaning there's a recess in the, uh, the boot that goes on here uh, from the end of the spark plug lead and or the, uh, the high tension lead that goes to the ignition coil. So there's the two basic uh, different styles. There'll be different uh, diameters, uh, number, count number on each of the terminals. This one's for a six cylinder as you can see there. And on this one it's for an eight cylinder so on the perimeter there you have eight eight different connections. Now on the other underside here this one's in fairly good shape. It was in uh, in use for a, oh, a couple thousand miles I guess and I decided I'd take it off and freshen up the system and keep this one for for future reference. I could actually still use this cap. It's in perfect working order. And you can see down inside there the different terminals and in the center there's a carbon button. Uh, the older style ones are about a oh, quarter inch diameter one, fairly solid looking thing. Never wear these ones out. Okay, I'd mentioned in my other video how on this particular cap, this one's off of a, a mid-90s uh, um, 4.3 liter V6 inch, V6 cubic inch engine. Let me clarify that and back up and get it straight. Um, and the biggest problem with these kind of caps here, well it's 262 cubic inches if I remember rightly. The General Motors made these things. So. Anyways, the carbon button down inside here, I would mentioned on my other video. I have another cap here that I, I can show you a better close-up on, but I'll just get to this quickly. There's a little tiny spring-loaded carbon button as compared to the bigger one that you, I just showed you in that um, tan-colored cap. Now, this is the weakest point of this type of cap, okay? So that's the first thing you should look for, okay? Um, the only way to see this is, is to get it off of the engine. You can't see it while it's on the engine because this is all you're going to see is from the outside. It has to come off the engine, right? Not the distributor. Alrighty then, um, things to watch out for. Okay. For the most part, you're going to probably replace a, a cap that's been in uh, use for, we'll oh, say, 12,000 miles. you got to really start looking closely after about the ear mark. Or that'll equate to um, 12,000 miles or 20,000 kilometers if you're in the metric system. So what you're looking for is look the cap all over, look for anything that's loose, that that's corroded. Okay, everything. It'll, these um, terminals, uh, they do get dirty. They oxidize. They get dirty. I shine these ones up here. You can see they're kind of shiny. These ones are made of brass. Same on the inside around the uh, perimeter. There, they're all brass. Okay. So some of the cheaper ones are made with aluminum terminals, okay? They do the job, but they're uh, not as professional, and the high-performance guys, I'm sure, will, will go tend to go to the brass and stay away from the aluminum when it comes to uh, distributor caps. Okay, so you're looking for uh, any cracks. You don't want a distributor cap with any cracks in it, okay? So you look on the whole thing outside, make sure that uh, everything is uh, looking and operating as it should. The screws, if they use the screw type, Another thing I'll mention too on here, these uh, hold down screws, there's two of them at 180 degrees apart. That particular cap, this one, 
it had uh, spring clips on the base of the distributor and they'd just flip up here and then they'd clamp down inside here on this little ledge here, one on each side at 180 degrees. Okay, so different ways that the uh, manufacturers uh, secured their caps. With a high energy uh, ignition coil cap, I believe there was, uh, was it four um, little screws from the top and they had a, a catch on the bottom or an angle if you will and they sort of grabbed onto the um, base of the uh, distributor. As well as the older um, caps that were like this that GM used with the points type ignition. They just had, I believe it was two um, screws that were spring loaded and same thing, a little um, angled bar at the bottom of that screw that you turn 180 degrees to, to hook onto the bottom of the distributor housing. Okay, some basics there just to get us started. So like I was saying, what you're looking for is any cracks any cracks and you look down in here into the if it's this type with the, the type you maybe get a flashlight and take a look down there you're looking for corrosion or any place where the um, the spark plug lead was maybe not tight enough and it started to arc high voltage electricity and it'll actually burn away some of the metal um, connections in there both on the spark plug lead and the cap so you're looking for anything that is uh, doesn't look um, doesn't look right um, no cracks, obviously. You have cracks, you can get moisture entering these things, and if moisture gets on the inside, then what's going to happen is you're uh, going to have sparks dancing all over the place. They should go to each terminal. Now, when this um, rotor is spinning inside this cap, I've got this upside down. It's this, These are mismatched. This one's off a of General Motors um, point type ignition about to, up till 1974. This one is about the same year, only used a uh, a single finger um, styled uh, rotor. But I'm going to use the two to demonstrate because I just happen to have these samples here. So this is basically spinning inside like so. So every time that the, uh, the high voltage spark is time, this little rotor tip has to uh, be in near proximity to the one of the terminals where it's going to fire that particular spark plug lead. Okay, so um, what you're looking for is uh, excessive wear. On the other um, video I have, um, there's a small tiny rotor and right in the middle here, if that carbon button got too short it would just wear it right away and that would be number one trouble spot. As well as for these type here, you're looking for the end here. What will happen is you'll get some high voltage electrical arcing here and it will start to erode this tip away. In um, some cases, you can get away with reusing the rotor. Um, they usually don't uh, you know, they don't usually um, wear too bad on the tip, but if you're going to replace the cap, you might as well replace the rotor too, just to make sure for some extra insurance. Okay, with the cap, especially on the aluminum ones, inside here, inside here, the, the high voltage um, electrical energy causes a big arc, or a flash, if you will, electrical spark, each and every time that the rotor um, has high voltage um, electricity going through it and making connection to one of these terminals. Now there's a bit of an air gap, much like a spark plug. It doesn't really make a physical uh, connection. And uh, after so many miles or kilometers, this will start to erode and wear away. And when they wear too much, it makes your coil work that much harder. Okay, it has to put out more voltage to jump that gap. All right, so you're looking for cracks anything that uh, looks out of place, uh, corrosion, broken bits, doesn't matter as long as um, everything looks good you're you're okay except for the wear like I was saying usually the tops of these are, are usually they stay pretty good but it's that inside the, the part that gets the most wear this particular one is the carbon button but on the um, all of them all of the caps the uh, the terminals around the yeah, outside there, they really take a beating with that electrical spark and that high voltage. Okay, what I got here, get this other stuff out of the way, and I got a little something here for you. Center it up. Okay, so here we go. We've got this basic same style. These ones, um, most distributor caps, if you spend a few extra dollars, you can get brass terminals, which is um, probably much better than the aluminum. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So what I've done is I've taken this cap and I've um, got a hacksaw out 
and uh, I made a cutting of it. Took a piece off here so we get inside here and actually see. Okay, so I just had it taped on there so it would hold its place while uh, I was getting this into um, into view for the center part of that video. Okay, so maybe I can zoom just a tiny bit without going out of frame there. All right, here we go. Um, <clears throat> excuse me once again. Most cases you'll find um, a powdery substance in here. Another thing I should mention too is you can't have any moisture or condensation inside any distributor cap. If I hadn't already said that, it's got to be nice and dry in there, um, no cracks, right? So you can see here, I'm pretty sure the video should show it. I can actually, I got a little LED flashlight here and I'll, I'll bring the lighting up a bit. I hope it doesn't make it the colors um, change too much. This is an LED light and it seems to have a different uh, color temperature, if you will. Okay. So you can see down there, there's a uh, an aluminum contact, one of them. And uh, what happens usually right in here, where the rotor spins around and um, that high uh, high energy spark jumps between the tip of the rotor and this outside terminal it will create this is the part that takes seems the most wear and abuse um, these will start to um, lose material and like you can see here I'm pretty sure you can see a green powder I'll just move this uh, LED light out so it doesn't confuse the color of the um, in the video but around this whole inside of this cap here there's this green substance now I'm thinking it's a powdery kind of a, a result from the high voltage electricity jumping between the rotor tip and these terminals because around the whole inside of that cap is all kind of a, a light green color a powdery substance if you will okay so that's the probably the biggest wear point in any distributor cap without mentioning this uh, center carbon button on this particular one here they're terrible they're way too under under engineered I like to see the the old one like in the tan cap where it's a solid piece of about quarter inch but uh, the thing that they do have in common all distributor caps is you will find this um, these inside contacts here after a period of about one year or high mileage that that'll start to uh, the material will get eaten away from the high um, the high energy spark so to speak so when that gets uh, too worn like I was mentioning the coil has to work much harder in order to get that spark to jump or the high energy voltage to jump from the tip of the rotor into each and every one of these terminals so that's the biggest point that you're going to find anybody that's uh, looked at distributor caps before or the ignition system in these older style uh, vehicles that's what they'll find most mostly the problem is um, if they're brass, they won't erode as much as the aluminum will, but they still will erode. And like I say, the only way you can really find out uh, what's going on inside there is to uh, remove the cap from the distributor housing. Not the housing, but the, uh, the main distributor body, if you will, and have a look underneath there. Okay. Uh, another thing I'll mention um, before I uh, say goodbye is um, whenever you're... Um, changing your cap let's say to um, put some new spark plug wires on or or you're gonna change the cap and replace it with a nice new shiny one uh, a newer is better uh, you get worn parts and that like I say the ignition coil uh, it puts stress on it and it has to output much more voltage um, and current uh, with a worn cap, especially like I, was, I keep mentioning this inside uh, these terminals where it erodes away from the uh, high energy uh, arcing with that high voltage. Um, but if you're going to change the cap, I'll get back to what I was getting getting on to say there, is uh, when you replace the wires, I mean the center uh, high tension lead to go to the coil self-explanatory, there's only one of those and it's usually fairly short unless your coil is mounted quite remotely from the rest of it. But what I do is, in, rather than a lot of people, they'll just, oh, I want to put a new cap on. So they pull all the wires off the cap, and then they replace the cap, and then they go, uh-oh. What about where all those wire, wires go? There's a, a firing order or sequence, if you will. So what I do is I only remove one wire at a time. Okay, I'll put the cap right next to the other one. Actually, if you can get the old cap with the wires on it beside the distributor after you remove it, and then put the new cap on, then you just transfer one wire 
to exactly the same part as um, it comes off the old one. And same thing when I'm working on spark plugs or uh, removing or installing spark plugs on uh, any engine is I'll take them out one at a time that way I know where that uh, spark plug uh, lead or wire goes to. But if you start you know grabbing a handful and taking the whole works off then uh, you're in for some fun trying to figure out what goes where so that's just something I'm going to leave you with just to save you some headaches and geez what do I do now kind of a thing. So there you have it folks. This is what to look out for and a recap here. No moisture is allowed to be on the inside there. It's got to be dry. No cracks. You want that as clean inside as possible. And like I, I'll just uh, mention one more time, those uh, contacts down inside there, they're the ones that uh, you'll probably see getting eaten up uh, the most when it comes to these type of ignition systems. Okay, so what's in there now, say if those weren't eroded, those contacts inside there where the rotor uh, spins around and uh, jumps the spark or high energy uh, voltage. Um, if those weren't too awfully eroded, just got to make sure you get all that powder and everything out of there, okay, if you really wanted to save a few bucks or whatever, but I would really go with once things start to wear and, you know, start to get uh, worn like that with those uh, things there. Uh, those are just the points that I just wanted to mention in closing. So I hope you enjoyed it, folks. There's my uh, there's my other video, a little bit more explanation as to what to look out for. So keep a look for those cracks and no moisture inside. And there you have it. Take care. Have a nice day, and uh, bye for now.